Merry Christmas. Welcome back to TNZ Travel. My name is Tristan. And if you are new to our channel, get ready to hear all about our travels across the world. We're gonna give you tips and tricks on staying on a budget. We're gonna give you some of the best eats that we can find, share some of the hidden gems that we can find, and more. Now, if you love travel as much as we do, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications so you guys can know when we drop a new video. Today's video is our part one of our trip in Utah, the Beehive State. Starting off from last video, which was Colorado part two, feel free to click the link above so you guys can watch that if you want to. We ended off in Moab at the Redstone Inn. This place was super duper cute. Unfortunately, it did not have free breakfast, but there was a McDonald's in walking distance, and that's super cheap. So today was all about the canyons, all about the arches, everything in Canyonlands and Arches National Park. We started off in Canyonlands National Park. This was about 30 minutes from our hotel and it is $30 to get into, but if you have that annual park pass, it is free. And when you go in, don't forget to grab one of those handy dandy maps. All right, so we started all the way up here come all the way down to the visitor center, the Island in the Sky Visitor Center. Now, if you go to the Schaefer Canyon Outlook, you'll see some amazing canyons. It just seems so vast and endless. Then we decided to come all the way down to the Mesa Arch. Now, this is a really popular place, especially to take photos. You get a nice view of an arch and then the canyon lands through it. Now, the Mesa Arch Trail is only 0.6 miles. It's a really easy hike, but get ready for a lot of dust in the air if the wind is blowing. Afterwards, we decided to travel just around the quarter to go to Aztec butt haha <laughs> but <laughs> the Aztec butt is two miles to hike you guys can actually climb up onto the hills we didn't unfortunately we kind of got lost along the way so we thought it would be safer just to travel back so after Canyonlands National Park we decided to go back in town and go to this cute little place for lunch called quesadilla mobilla they have all these food trucks around but we decided to go to that one it was one of the more popular ones and you couldn't go southwest without getting some Mexican food. And I have to say, I think that was the best quesadilla I have ever had. It was well worth the eight to nine dollars that you spend to get it. But after lunch, we headed over to the Arches National Park. This is also $30 to get into, but since it is a national park, it is free with that annual park pass. So the visitor center is right down here, right in the beginning of the park, which is nice. Then you get to go all through here and stop at any points that you want to. We decided to go all the way over to the north, south window, and turret arch. Now this windows loop and turret arch is 1.2 miles, and it's a really, really easy hike. It's great to bring your family members on, especially kids, or just do if you guys are looking to have more of a relaxed day. Next, we decided to travel all the way up here to the delicate arch now we didn't do the whole delicate arch trail we just didn't have time and enough energy so instead we decided to go to the viewpoint and we hiked up the upper delicate arch viewpoint this was a half a mile hike and it was a nice steep incline so it is kind of difficult now that was pretty much it for the Canyonlands and arches national park so once we were done we drove all the way to salt lake city this was about a four hour drive and we definitely wanted to get to see the great salt lake unfortunately it was snowing and very foggy and we couldn't see anything but I have to say on the drive up there the stars in the sky are unreal if you ever get the chance take your car park it on the side of the street and just get out and look up and just... you won't get that here in Virginia in Salt Lake City we stayed near the airport at Ramada this was a really cheap place to stay. It was only about $47, which was cheaper than most of the places we have already stayed before. Now, it was really, really late when we got there, so the only thing open that was around was an Arby's, but that's okay, because that's cheap and still pretty yummy. So the next day, we did get to have free breakfast, which is definitely a bonus. Our next destination was going to be the Bonneville Salt Flats. Now, this was about a two-hour drive, and before you guys go, some things to know. You're gonna be driving on a road that's about 80 miles per hour, and a lot of people end up going 90. 
This is a really, really fast road and it will drain up your gas. So you want to make sure that your car is almost full because there are barely any gas stations along the way or along the way back. Also, if you get to choose the day that you guys are going instead of how we have it planned where we just kind of get lucky if it rains or not, if it rains, go because salt flats will turn into like a sheet of mirrored ice. It's still amazing and beautiful without it, but if you can choose a day, go right after it rains. It does seem that the Bonifil salt flats go forever. If you kind of look into the background, there's all these mountains and it seems that it goes all the way to them. Now, this is kind of a free for all, so once you kind of get to that parking area where they have the restrooms, you can take your car and drive onto the salt flats and keep going wherever you want to. You'll see people doing donuts, you'll see people taking photo shoots. It really is like a place with no rules, no limits. I definitely have to say this was one of my favorite places to go. If you're looking to take professional photos, if you're looking to take professional videos, this is a must see place. Now we had an unfortunate experience where we forgot to turn off the car as we were parked and doing stuff because we wanted to play music while we were doing stuff. So it ended up draining a lot of our gas. And what happened is on that road back, since we weren't going to Las Vegas, we took the same road back. We basically ran out of gas and we're on E for maybe 20 to 30 miles and had a heart attack. We were trying to get a hold of roadside assistance and nobody was saying anything. And luckily the car that we had just was like, I'm gonna pull you guys through and get you to the next gas station. And that's what happened. Super lucky, would not recommend that to anybody. We were sweating. After Bonneville Salt Flats, we had one last stop to go, and this was all the way to Bryce Canyon to sleep. This was the longest drive that we had. It was five hours and 17 minutes. You do what you gotta do to get everything done in a certain period of time. On the way down, we stopped at a Cafe Rio. Now, Cafe Rio, we have it here in Virginia, but it's just one of our favorite places to eat, especially that sweet barbacoa quesadilla. It's so good. If you have not been to Cafe Rio, please go and get that quesadilla. So our drive down to our hotel basically had on and off snowstorms, but it got really, really bad when we got really close to our hotel. The car was slipping and sliding around and we almost didn't even make it to our hotel because it went up this tiny little hill and our car just wouldn't go up it because of all the snow that was sitting there. We kind of had to push our car up to get to the hotel. But when we got there, this was the cutest place ever. We stayed at the Quality Inn Bryce Canyon in Panguitch, Utah. Now this place kind of reminds you of an old little western town and it kind of was surreal the fact that we were coming into a little western town during a snowstorm. It just seemed like a movie. Unfortunately, since it was really snowy and we were about 20 minutes from town before everything closed, we didn't really get to eat anything for dinner. <laughs> but they did have some snacks in the front lobby, so... We didn't starve. So overall, the first two days in Utah were very adventurous through all the weather that we had to go through, through all the different canyons that we saw. It really was a different world. When you see things online, it doesn't do it justice because when you're there in person, it just becomes so surreal. If I could go back again, I definitely want to go back to Salt Lake City to see more of it. Unfortunately, because of the weather, we couldn't really go into the city or to the Great Salt Lake. I'd also love to go back to Moab. It's just the cutest little town maybe do some ATV riding or do some canyoneering that place has a ton of stuff to do but I think my favorite part had to be the Bonneville salt flats it was just the perfect weather and a really flat land especially with me as a flow artist I got to bring my hula hoops and my silk fans and just have a blast out there blast my music with no judgment and no limits as far as cheap tips and tricks go with this trip it definitely had to be having that annual park pass so that way going to the national parks you don't have to pay that extra $30. The Bonneville Salt Flats are a free excursion so that's a place to go if you guys are on a budget. Also always make sure that you guys try and stay at a place with free breakfast. Some of ours didn't but most of ours do and that definitely helps us cut down the cost. Thank you guys for tuning in to see our trip to Utah part one. Get ready for next week for Utah part two. Hope to see you guys soon. Make sure you stay safe on your travels and I'll see you guys later.